Hey there, this is your host, Dr. Lori Friesen, and you're listening to episode number 72 of Beginning Teacher Talk. Just because you're a beginning elementary teacher, there is no need for you to struggle like one. I'm dedicated to being the mentor for you that I wish I had when I first started teaching. In this podcast, we talk about all of the -the behind-the-scenes stuff about teaching you really need to know but didn't learn when you were in university. And we share the most amazing resources, tips, and strategies out there so you can become the teacher you've always dreamed of being. Let's start the show. Well, hey there, my friends. Welcome back again. How are you today? I hope that you're enjoying your summer, that you're getting a chance for some rest and for some relaxation. It is pouring rain in Lexington, Kentucky today, so I'm grateful that I don't have to water all of my flowers, but yeah, it's a really rainy day. But I hope that you're starting to enjoy your summer, that you're feeling like you're getting a handle on what the fall is going to look like, no matter what form it takes. It's so complicated. I get it. Um, So today we're going to talk about how to create a caring classroom community even when social distancing inside your classroom. You've probably been dreaming about teaching your first day of school inside your very own classroom for years, but never in your wildest dreams did you think that you would have to consider things like, how do I keep students from touching each other? Or how do I ensure that my students wash their hands? And how do I keep my classroom clean? So in short, how do I keep my students safe throughout all of this? I get it. It's a very weird time in our world. And COVID may change the way we do things inside our classrooms for a very long time. However, I want to encourage you to shift your mindset around all of this away from, oh, I wish things could just be normal, to accepting what is and pivoting to make this first week of school the most incredible experience possible for your students. It's really about deciding that you are going to make this an amazing experience for your students and leading them through this in the most positive way possible. And I've been so inspired and so encouraged by all the conversations that new teachers have been having inside our private Beginning Teacher Talk Facebook group also in my Ready for School Academy Facebook group, you are so inspiring to me because you are already pivoting. You're already saying it doesn't matter. I'm just super excited to have my own classroom and to make it my own. So in your new role of classroom teacher, you will very quickly realize if you haven't already that you are now the leader, right? There's no... TA, there's no mentor teacher, it's your classroom. So you will get to set the tone for how your students respond to this new normal. And the more positive you are about it, or the more freaked out and nervous you are about it, that is how your students are going to respond. So before you get started with planning, it's really important that we get our mindset right. So just decide and commit to being as nimble and as solution oriented as you can and encourage your students to help you to set a safe and positive tone to everything that happens while you're together at school. The thing is, it's very possible to develop a positive, close, and loving classroom community, even when students can't be physically close to each other. So before we dive in and talk about exactly how you can do this, if plans at your school are still up in the air and you're concerned that you might need to make the transition to teaching online with your students, you might want to check out a brand new mini course I've created to help you with that. It's called Transition to Teaching Online, connect and create a safe, caring community, build engagement, and provide social and emotional support to your students. So inside that mini course, I'm going to provide step-by-step PDF resources, some awesome resources to help you set up your at-home teaching space, and a spreadsheet loaded with teacher-tested links for each subject area so that you can 
truly feel ready to make this transition and I'll walk you through it all step by step. So if you want to learn more, just click the link inside the show notes for this episode, episode number 72, and you can get all of the details. So if you think you need to make the transition to teaching online, or if you think this is going to be a possibility for you, you might want to check out this new mini course. So again, I'll link to that in the show notes for this episode. All right. I won't make you wait any longer. Let's talk about eight ways to create a caring classroom community in the first week of school, even when social distancing is required. Now, if you're a member of the Ready for School Academy, inside step number four of the Academy, I share 14 fantastic first week of school activities that I used in my classroom in both lower and upper elementary with great success over my 10 years in the classroom. Now, if you're listening right now and you're saying, hold on, Lori, I'm not an Academy member, you can grab a copy of that resource very inexpensively inside my Beginning Teacher Talk Teachers Pay Teachers store. So I'll link to where you can purchase it in the show notes for this episode, episode number 72. Now you certainly don't need to purchase my resource in order to do many of the activities that we're going to talk about today. Having it just makes things a little easier for you. So you have grab and go templates for the ideas that I'm going to share. But let's talk about how to adapt some of these activities as well as some new activities that you may want to consider to ensure social distancing is maintained inside your classroom, all while creating a caring classroom community from the very first day. So number one, I would recommend that you choose books that help children to process their feelings. So especially with everything that's going on in our world right now, giving children opportunities to talk about all of the emotions that are often stirred up for everyone, including the teacher at the start of a new school year is going to be particularly valuable right now, especially during this time when back to school will likely feel a little different than usual for many children. Giving students opportunities to talk about what they're feeling can be a valuable first step towards creating an open honest and caring classroom community. So let's talk about three books that I love to use and I've used these from kindergarten to fifth grade. The first one is called Wemberly Worried by Kevin Hankies. This is such a great story about a little mouse named Wemberly who worries about everything. And don't think that if you're teaching fifth grade, they're too old for this because they're still worrying about different things. But picture books are a great gateway to talking about feelings. So in this book, Wemberly's parents think that she worries too much and so does her grandmother. They're all they're kind of worried about her worrying. So you can imagine how poor Wemberly feels on the very first day of school, right? She's all tied up in knots. She has a whole list of worries. What will school be like? Will she make friends? Will people laugh? because she has a doll named Petal. So it's such a great book to use during the first week of school when, of course, everyone has some worries of their own. So it's a really nice way to start talking about, well, what are you kind of worried about right now? So you can get an idea of how your children or your students are processing everything that's going on. The second book I would recommend to you is called Scaredy Squirrel by Melanie Watt. If you don't know Melanie Watt, she's a fantastic author. She has another hilarious book called Chester, which is about this fat cat who keeps interrupting her writing. But again, very entertaining author. But this book, Scaredy Squirrel, is another award-winning book that I love about how to conquer fears and worries. So this book is about a little squirrel who never leaves his nut tree because it's a way too dangerous out there in the big unknown, right? What if he encounters a tarantula or a green Martian or killer bees or sharks? Which, of course, talks about irrational fears, right? And a lot of us have irrational fears. But Scaredy Squirrel knows he's well prepared for any emergency because he has his antibacterial soap, which kids are going to really relate to, especially right now, his band-aids and his parachute. So cute. So then one day, Scaredy Squirrel finds himself literally out on the limb of a tree, of his nut tree. And as he leaps out there into the great unknown, he discovers something he couldn't have imagined. So it's a really great book to help your new students gather their courage and develop their confidence to conquer new things and achieve huge goals, but also just to understand that being scared is normal. And we all have these fears that seem so big until we realize that they don't have to be. 
The third book that I love is called First Day Jitters by Julie Danberg. So everyone knows that sinking feeling like in the pit of their stomach when they're starting anything new. And so of course, school is no exception, especially school right now. So Sarah Hartwell is the main character in this story. And she's really scared because she doesn't want to start over at a new school. And she just is completely convinced that it's going to be terrible. But of course, she manages to pull herself together and get to school where she meets a new friend, Mrs. Burton, who helps her through this new challenge. So your kids are going to love the surprising way that this story ends. And I have a bunch of other favorite books that I love to use at the beginning of the school year. So you can check out episode number 20 of the Beginning Teacher Talk podcast. And again, I'll link to that episode inside the show notes for this episode if you want to hear some of my other favorites, but so many good ones to help kids just start talking about how they're feeling as they start the school year. The second piece of advice I have for you about how to create a caring community, even when kids have to social distance, is to invite students into the conversation about ways to keep us safe and to develop habits together for how you're going to do this inside your classroom. Anytime you can involve kids in the conversation, there's more buy-in and there's more sense of a community. So as a follow-up discussion to one of the books that I've suggested, you might want to involve your students in a conversation about some of the ways that you're going to work together to keep everyone safe inside your classroom and inside the school this year. So brainstorm ideas to list on chart paper. This might involve wearing masks, right? So your school may require masks, probably will, may require maintaining social distance and what that looks like inside the classroom. It might mean washing our hands a lot more often and washing the surfaces of the classroom more often than usual and having new dedicated jobs on your job board to help achieve this inside your classroom. I think I mentioned this in a previous episode, but adding jobs like chief sanitizing officer and soap manager might be great additions this year. And I would have one boy and one girl in charge of doing each job so that the chief sanitizing officer, for example, could be in charge of wiping down common surfaces in the classroom using a disinfecting wipe. And then of course, your soap manager may be in charge of dispensing hand sanitizer to all of the students inside your classroom. Now, you'll already be teaching and practicing your classroom routines with your students on the first day in the first week of school, so it's a natural extension to talk about special considerations and special things you're going to do this year in your classroom because of COVID. And my advice to you is to talk about these changes matter-of-factly. Like, don't make this a bigger deal than it is. Instead, work to normalize this new normal for your students by talking about it as naturally as you would your pencil sharpening routine. Even if it feels weird to you, I think we need to model this for our students that this is just the way it is. It's not a big deal. Remember, kids are going to take your lead. So be positive and upbeat, even if you're feeling a little nervous too. Now, third, I recommend that you create a class poster about how we can show we care basically, even if we can't hug. So help your students to take ownership of their new classroom by, again, brainstorming ways that they can demonstrate care and kindness for each other, even when they can't hug or share in the, in ways that they've been taught to do. So this might mean showing respect for each other's ideas. So you'll need to teach your students what showing respect looks like and sounds like when you're teaching your class jobs on the first day of school. It might mean being patient with each other. It might mean really encouraging each other. What does that look like? What does that sound like? How can we encourage each other? How can we be patient with each other? What are some examples? And taking ownership of our own things to keep everybody safe. So making sure we clean up after ourselves and cleaning the shared spaces in our classroom regularly to help keep everyone safe. So just involving your students in the creation of these new ways that they can show care and consideration for each other will likely help them to feel like they have at least some measure of control over their environment at a time when nothing seems very certain for them. 
Number four is secret compliments. Now, I included this activity inside my 14 Fantastic First Week of School Activities resource, and this activity is a wonderful way to build community inside your classroom in the first weeks of school, and it doesn't involve children needing to be close to each other physically, but it really creates an amazing sense of community. So it's appropriate for third grade and above at the beginning of the year, or if you have an academically very strong class in second grade, you could do this at the beginning of second grade as well. So this activity involves giving each child a paper bag that they get to decorate using positive adjectives to describe themselves and anything really cool that helps other people know something about them. So you can give them stickers, they can use glitter glue, you could have a little bit of fun with this. But once they have their decorated paper bag, students either randomly draw a classmate's name who will be their secret pal for the week who they will write a genuine compliment for each day as their morning work. Or you can randomly assign one child to each student for them to write to each day. So when I did this, I just had a paper bag with all of my students' names in it, and I would walk around the classroom and put one on every child's desk so they knew that was the child they were going to write to for that day. We put them back in the bag, and we would redistribute them for the next day. And then I would continue to rotate names for two weeks, And then let your students open their bags at the end of two weeks and read all of the wonderful things our classmates have said about them. So you can get the full description for how to teach this activity in your classroom inside the 14 Fantastic First Week of School Activities resource that I mentioned, because a big part of the success for this activity depends on how well you teach students and model for students what a compliment, a genuine compliment, looks like and feels like. So you'll want to spend some time on that in your classroom when you do this activity with your students. Okay, next up, number five is appreciation circles. So not only can we help our students to develop a caring classroom community through writing, but we can also teach children to do this by being intentional with their language. So teaching children that words matter and that the way they speak to each other has the power to either make someone's day or hurt them deeply can go a long way towards developing a classroom community where children feel safe and loved. So following up from the secret compliment activity, review what a genuine compliment is and share some examples of genuine compliments. And then in a classroom where children are practicing social distancing, have them sit in a wide circle and take some time to think about things that they appreciate about each other. So you could even have their desks in a wide circle, depending on the size of your classroom. You might want to brainstorm some sentence starters to help your students formulate their ideas. Like one thing I really appreciate appreciate about you is, and model that for your students. Let some of the students know what you truly appreciate about several of your students so they can feel how good that feels. And then list a bunch of different ideas. So have the students give you some ideas of what they might say about their classmates and emphasize that they need to really think about whether or not a statement truly applies to a person, because the more true it is, the better it often feels to that person. So it works well to have some kind of a group incentive to encourage children to get started with sharing their appreciation. So one idea that I love is to place one paper heart or some other kind of token. It doesn't have to be a heart, but I just had paper hearts in front of each child, one heart in front of each child. And when someone says one thing that they appreciate about another that child gets to add their heart to a jar that is placed in the center of the circle. So if one student says to, so if there's Jason across from Alyssa and Jason says to Alyssa, one thing I appreciate about you is that you are always kind and considerate to everybody else. Then Alyssa gets to take her heart and put it into the jar. So once everyone has received one compliment about why they're appreciated, the class earns a special reward. So it could be like a two minute dance party to a fun, upbeat song. It could be a quick game that the class loves, a surprise, hilarious video that you found to share with them, or maybe even a bit of free time, whatever you want. Sometimes I love to surprise my class with a secret reward that I would print and place in a fancy gift bag inside the heart jar. So it was just written on a strip of paper. And once everyone receives received one compliment about how they were appreciated, I would open the bag and tell my students what the reward was after 
I mean, they had to guess. They had to do a few guesses, of course, first. Now, if you're a Ready for School Academy member, I've given you 24 creative, almost free student awards to help inspire your imagination for how you might want to decide on a special goodie for your kiddos. Or you can even include a few ideas in the bag and let them vote for the one they want. If you aren't an Academy member, you can grab your copy of this resource inside my Teachers Pay Teacher store. Again, it's called 24 Creative Almost Free Student Awards. So the first time you do appreciation circles with your students, it may be difficult. It might feel uncomfortable for some students. It's just hard to get going. However, once you start doing these on a regular basis, so once every week if you can in the first month of school and then maybe once a month after that, it really will change the way your students interact and feel as members of your amazing classroom community. So they really work well. Number six is a classroom scavenger hunt. So you might be thinking that having students do a fun scavenger hunt inside your classroom to learn about where everything is kept is going to be off limits in a classroom with COVID restrictions, but it's still possible to do it. You just have to do it a little differently. So I would usually do this activity with my students in pairs, but if you're practicing social distancing in your classroom, this is an activity that can be done individually. So five or six students can be walking around the classroom at a time, being careful to maintain social distance while the rest of the class is engaged in another activity. And then they just swap, they just change places. So I give you the full instructions for how to do this activity in the 14 fantastic first week of school activities resource. It's always a class favorite and it's a great way for students to get out of their seats to explore their new classroom safely. So if you don't know what a classroom scavenger hunt is, basically the students have a list of different items they need to find in the classroom and as they find them, they write down the number of what it is that they were supposed to be searching for. So you can decide how many or how little they want to, you want them to search for in your classroom. But I love to use this at the first week, during the first week of school, because it really helps kids to find a lot of the common things they're going to need to use in the classroom. All right, number seven is a t-shirt activity and a guess that person bingo activity. So much fun. My students love this one. I use this every year in second grade, fourth grade, sixth grade, all the time. So two of the other activities that I share, of course, again, inside 14 Fantastic First Week of School Activities um, is a t-shirt activity and a follow-up bingo activity. So both of these activities are great ways for kids to get to know their classmates without needing to sit physically close to each other. So in a nutshell, the t-shirt activity involves having children design a paper t-shirt. Of course, you could do this on real t-shirts, but I wouldn't have the budget for it. So I just have a template of a paper t-shirt and I have them fill in the t-shirt with specific information about themselves. So for example, you might have them draw and label their favorite food on the right sleeve of the shirt and then maybe their least favorite school subject on the left sleeve and maybe their favorite thing to do on the weekend on the shirt pocket. You get the idea. But you can decide what you want them to share in different parts of the t-shirt. And then once they're done, your students will have a paper t-shirt that showcases a whole bunch of fun information about them. And I like to have them put their name right on the pocket so that we know, you know, whose t-shirt this belongs to. Then children introduce themselves and they share one or two pieces of information about themselves from their t-shirt. But we have a rule in our classroom that no repeats are allowed. So if someone says that their favorite food is pizza, then nobody else can say that one. So as they're giving their presentations and sharing the information about what's on their t-shirts, I keep a record of what each child has said. So it's very simple. I just keep a first name checklist of all of my students. And if Brandon says pizza for his favorite, then I just write favorite pizza and that's it. It's just a quick little uh, note to remember what each child has said. If you're teaching fourth grade and above, maybe even third grade, you could have students also create notes. You could give them a first name checklist and have them um, write in their notes as well if you want to. So you need all that information so you have it for the follow-up activity, which is called Guess That Person Bingo, and kids love this one. So basically, you have your kiddos fill in an empty bingo card, and I give you a template, with the names of their classmates, and then they play using information that we've just learned about all their friends in the class. So for example, if I said their favorite food is pizza, then everyone would have to remember, who was that? Brandon, right. Okay, so then they check their bingo card and if they have Brandon, they get to put a marker on that on that name. 
So at the end, after you've played a few rounds of bingo and the kids have learned some things about each other, you can display your t-shirts on a clothesline and string it across your room. And by the way, students can then study them during their free time and be better prepared for the next round of bingo. And the other thing I love about this bingo game, the follow-up game, is that it's a really great filler activity. So if you have an extra 10 minutes, you can have all the kids grab a, their bingo card or keep it in their desks and play another round of bingo or swap cards and play another round. So it's really fun. Such a simple, fun, and meaningful way for children to connect and get to know each other, all while remaining socially distant and staying safe in their classrooms. All right, number eight is one of my favorites. Oh my gosh, I think this is my favorite all time for first week of school because it's such a great way to encapsulate the year. So number eight is time capsules. And really there never there may never have been a better year than this one to create time capsules with your students to document this time in history and in their lives. Especially if you start the time capsule at the beginning of the year and then they get to see it again at the end of the year, it's crazy how much might have changed for them in this whole year. So have your students draw and write about what school is like at the start of the school year and encourage them to write about how they're feeling and what they miss about how school and life outside of school was like before COVID-19. Have them write about the ways things that are in their life right now. And I give you a basic template inside the 14 Fantastic First Week of School Activities resource, but you may want to customize this for your specific situation and the circumstances at your school. So I give you the full instructions for how to create time capsules with your students inside that resource. But again, this would be an especially meaningful way to help your students to bond around this very unique circumstance that they find themselves in in this school year. So there you have it. I hope this was helpful for you to see the many ways that it's still very possible to create a fun and meaningful first week of school while creating a caring classroom community and keeping kids safe during COVID-19. Now, again, like I mentioned at the beginning, if plans at your school are still up in the air and you're concerned that you might need to make the transition to teaching online with your students, you might want to check out my brand new mini course that I've created to help you with that called Transition to Teaching Online, Connect and Create a Safe Caring Community, Build Ultimate Engagement, and Provide Social and Emotional Support to Your Students. So I'll provide step-by-step PDF resources, some awesome resources to help you set up your at-home teaching space, a spreadsheet loaded with teacher-tested links for each subject area, and lots of other goodies to walk you through each step. So if you want to learn more, just click the link inside the show notes for this episode, episode number 72, and you can get all of the details. All right, I hope you have a fabulous week. And remember, just because you're a beginning elementary teacher, there's no need for you to struggle like one. Bye for now. Thank you.